Hi, my name is Kari Herzog and I'm the Product Architect here at FieldSync. What I'd like to go over in this video is how you can quickly and easily set up FieldSync to utilize the new scheduling module that we just released in 2.5. So let's go ahead and get started right away. Now the first step that you'll need to do is to go into the settings module. So I'll select the settings button here. And when you get into the settings module, you'll want to click on the system tab. Now within the system tab, you're going to see some new values. You'll see event types and schedule status, which we're going to talk about right now. So let's go into event types first of all. Now within the scheduling module, each event that you create is assigned an event type. Event types can be configured for your company so that you can track the events that are important to your business. So as you can see on my screen here, I've created some example event types that I can utilize within my scheduler. You can add to this list by simply selecting add new value and typing in the new value. Now event types are used also to control the visibility to the different events on the scheduler. As you can see, we have a staff link next to each event type. Now if we go into the staff link for birthday, you'll see that all of my active users have been assigned to this event type. What this means is that any of these users, when they log in, they will be able to create events that have an event type of birthday and they'll also be able to view events that have an event type of birthday. Now, unless you really need to lock down the visibility of different events from specific staff members, I really suggest that you go into each of your event types and assign them to all of your staff so everyone has visibility to the company calendar. However, for example, you may have a manager's meeting and you only want individuals that are actually managers to be able to view that event and create those events. So as you can see here, I've assigned only myself and the West manager to the manager meeting. So that means that any events that are created with a manager meeting event type will only be visible to these two individuals. So that's how you set up the event types and that's the first step that you need to take. Next, you can also set up values for schedule status. Again, you'll select on values next to schedule status and here you'll see the different values that I've created. Now, status within an event is an optional field, so you do not have to utilize this feature if you don't see use for it. But a couple of examples might be if you want to utilize a status for your staff schedule, you can set it so that they can acknowledge that they've seen the shift that you've scheduled them for and change the status of it. You could also use status to indicate whether or not vacation has been approved. So now you've basically done everything you need to do to start using the scheduler. So let's go ahead and navigate to the schedule module. And you can do so by selecting on this icon up here in the upper left hand corner from any point within the web application. Now there's also a mobile application, which I'll go over in a different video, but any appointments or any events that you create within the web will also be visible on the mobile device. So let's quickly go through just the ins and outs of the scheduling module. When you first come into the screen, by default you will see the day view and it will default to the current date. Now you can see over here that you have several different views to look at. You can view the schedule by work week, you can view the schedule by week, and you can view the schedule by month. And regardless of which view you're in, you can use these arrows here to navigate forward and backward by one increment. And at any point you can click on today to return you to today's date. The month calendar that you see over here is also used for navigation. So by selecting on any date within this calendar, you can automatically navigate to that date. Now you also have the ability within each of the views to export the data to PDF. So let me show you how easy it is to add events to the scheduler. Whichever view you're in, you simply right click and you're presented with two different options to create a new event or a new recurring event. So I'll select new event and now my new event window is displayed. I can enter a subject, which is a required field. The description can be entered, but it is not required. I enter a start time and an end time. The end time will always default to half an hour following that. 
but that can be changed by simply choosing a different time. Now here under event type, you see that list of event types that we created within the settings. Now since I'm logged in as a supervisor user, I have visibility to all of the event types. But if I were logged in as a different user, I would only see those event types that have been specifically assigned to me. Now one of the things that we've built in is some logic so that when you select an event type, the user dropdown is updated to show you the users that have visibility to that event type. So as we looked at earlier, the birthday event type was available to all of my users. Now if I change this to the manager meeting, you'll see now that the, only the two users that have visibility to that event type are listed. So I'll go ahead and select myself and the manager. Again, we have some filtering capabilities. So if I choose customer, by default, I see all of my customers. However, if I want to filter down that list, I can choose my West region, which will change my customer list to only include customers within the West region. So I can choose select all and add all of those customers to the event. Now here's the status that we also set up. Over here I can indicate whether or not I want the event to be an all-day event, and those are displayed up at the top of the calendar. Now let's talk about contacts. When I choose the contact, you can see that there's some values listed in there. And if I choose one of the values, it automatically populates the location information. Now these three contacts that you see in this list include contacts from all of the customers that are selected for the event. So within the, the customer management module, you have the ability to create contacts for each customer. And that information is now accessible right here to allow you to easily add in the location of where the event might be taking place. Now, if the event is not tied to a contact or to a customer, then you can simply come in here and type in the information as well. So let's take a quick look at recurrence. Now, as you've seen in Outlook or many other scheduling applications, you can set each event to recur, either on a daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly basis. And for each of these, you have options regarding how, how often and on which days. So I can set this, for example, as a weekly appointment, and let's say I want it to occur every Monday and Wednesday. And I'm going to set this to end after four occurrences. So now when I save that event, you'll see I have my demo field sync and my demo field sync for Monday and for Wednesday, and again for the following week. So that is a quick overview on how to get field sync set up to use the scheduler, as well as how to add new events to the scheduler. In another video, I'll go through some of the additional functionality, and we'll also talk about the mobile application. Thank you.